Before I begin, I would like to address the families of the hostages, our brothers and sisters. Last night, I convened the, gov the government in order to approve the first stage in the deal for the return of the hostages. Since the beginning of the war, I have not stopped thinking about them, and I do not stop thinking about you, the families. I've met with you. I heard from you. Everything you're going through, I heard from you about this ongoing nightmare, the torment of uncertainty and the concern that knows no boundaries. And when I meet with you, you always attach the families of the pictures of your loved ones to your chest, to your heart. And my colleagues and I, we look at each and every picture, these pictures are a call for action. Since the outbreak of the war, we are indeed taking action constantly in order to bring them back home, to bring them all back home. And when I say all, I mean all of them. And that includes Ron and Adal and Abera and Hisham. We've defined the goals of this war very clearly to obliterate Hamas, to release our hostages, and to guarantee that the day after Hamas, Gaza will no longer pose a threat on Israel. We said that we will do everything we can in order to create the condi conditions for releasing the hostages. And this is what has happened. What paved the way for this deal is a combination of two great efforts. The first effort is massive military pressure, incessant pressure that we exert on Hamas. And I would like to praise the IDF and the ISA for their tremendous activities in order to create this pressure. The second effort is the great diplomatic effort and pressure that we're exerting for the release of the hostages. We were engaged in a very tough negotiations. We were very firm about it. And I just re spoke with President Biden a few minutes ago, and I thanked him for everything he did in order to improve the outline of the deal. And indeed, such an improvement was achieved. The combination of the military effort and the diplomatic effort, this is what made the conditions ready for the release of the hostages. And I believe that this combination will enable the return of more hostages in the next stages. The current outline will not include the release of murderers and it does include the agreement of representatives of the Red Cross for their visits to the hostages and bringing medicines to that to them. And I've heard that the Red Cross says that uh, they haven't heard about it, but this is the explicit item in the deal. The Red Cross will be allowed to visit the hostages and give them any medicine that they need. And I do expect of the Red Cross to do their job. Citizens of Israel, as the the Prime Minister of Israel, I often find myself in a position in which I need to make very difficult decisions between a hard choice and an even harder one. And that is the case with the release of the hostages. The effort to bring them all back home continues constantly. And at this point in time, we can achieve the release of babies and children, mothers and women with a sword literally at their neck. This is the edict of releasing hostages, and we have a great moral imperative to bring to their release. In the history of the State of Israel, whenever it was possible, we released hostages through military campaign, and we did that even though we paid a heavy price. It happened at Sabena, the Savoy Hotel, and at Antebe, and it even happened in this war just a few weeks ago when we released in a very bold military operation the soldier but that's not always possible. And this is why we are not waiting. We are seizing each and every opportunity to release our hostages because to bring them back home is a sacred mission. The IDF and the entire security establishment support this deal. And they've clarified time and again yesterday in the government meeting that uh, the safety of our forces will be guaranteed during the pause, the ceasefire. And during this time, the IDF will prepare for the continuation of the war. In the wee hours of the morning, the 
government reached its decision. And I wholeheartedly believe, along with my uh, fellow ministers, that this is the right decision. I'd like to thank all my uh, peers for uh, joining me on this decision. Minister of Defense, Gallant Minister Gantz, the Chief of General Staff, Herzia Levy, the Director of the Mossad, Dadi Barnea, the Director of the ISA, Ronen Bar, Major General in Reserves, Nitzan Alof, and Brigadier General in Reserves, Gal Hirsch, all the people who have helped and who have acted in order to bring about this release, as well as all the ministers. Citizens of Israel, I wish to be clear, the war continues, the war continues, and we are going to continue with this war until we achieve all of our goals to bring back all of our hostages, to obliterate Hamas, and to ensure that the day after Hamas, there won't be any uh, agent, any organization that rules Hamas which advocates terrorism, participates in terrorism, and educates for terrorism. We are going to bring back safety and security both to the north of Israel and to the south of Israel. We are winning, and we are going to continue to fight until we reach absolute victory. And we are doing so thanks to the courage of our brave troops and thanks to the sacrifice of our sons and daughters, the great heroes of this country. And I always remember this victory, this triumph, Triumph comes with a heavy price. Our soldiers that are risking their lives for all of us, our hero soldiers who were killed in order to protect our home. This evening, I spoke with Avichai and Tali Barazani. Their son, Dvir, from the Paratroopers Brigade, was killed in action this week in Gaza, in the battle zone in Gaza. I've known Avichai for many years. He comes from the security establishment, and he told me that he wrote to his son, Dvir, as you go to fight Hamas. Remember that there are 400 Israeli citizens who were murdered brutally by a terrible enemy. They are all standing behind you. Avichai and Tali had asked me, and all the bereft parents that I spoke with asked for the same thing. Please carry this through until you reach absolute victory. Citizens of Israel, I stand here this evening in order to say something very clear to you. This is exactly what we're going to do. We are going to fight together and God willing, together we will win. October, Hamas on October 7th, Hamas started a war against the state of Israel. They thought that they will be able to dismantle and break apart the state of Israel this way and hoist the Hamas flag at the center of the Negev region that through the brutal murders and the terrible atrocities committed by them, they will lead to a situation that the state of Israel will lose its will to continue and exist to continue and fight. But they made a mistake. They made a very grave mistake and the outcome will be the dismantling of Hamas. The day Hamas committed its terrible murders. It actually doomed the fate of Gaza, and it also decided the fate of Hamas. Any ending image of this war must include two very clear aspects. One of them is dismantling Hamas as a governmental and military framework organization, and number two, the return of all the hostages to the State of Israel. I am fully committed to that. So is the security establishment. The IDF is committed to that, and we will carry out this mission of ours. For almost a month, IDF forces have been operating inside the Gaza Strip. They are operating with determination, precision, and lethality. It is achieved through cooperation and combination of ground forces, air forces, and from the sea. Everything is accompanied by very precise intel provided by the Intel Directorate and by the ISA and other agencies. And we are achieving two very important goals. First of all, we are dismantling Hamas as a belligerent combative organization. We are harming their troops, their commanders, their infrastructure above the ground, beneath the ground. Every day, dozens of items which prove exactly what kind of an organization Hamas is. We are a 
capturing terrorists and we interrogate and gain information from them. And in addition to that, as the ground forces, as the IDF is maneuvering on the ground, they are bringing closer the conditions that will allow a deal for the release of hostages between us and Hamas. And that's a very simple reason. And this is exactly why I recommend it to the cabinet. And I'm glad to say that they accepted my recommendation to continue our maneuver into the depth of the Gaza. Hamas only understands force. The more achievements we have, this will increase the chance to bring back the hostages. We are talking about savages, about despicable murderers, but they do understand force. And hopefully, God willing, we will see the release of hostages and we will show everyone what is the power of Israel and how it can achieve and outline a deal that brings back hostages to their homes. With every step that the IDF makes as it progresses into the Gaza Strip, this increases the chances to bring back the hostages to their homes. I hope that the deal that was agreed upon will indeed be carried out. The outline of the deal is more correct and is better than the previous outlines from a week ago. And this had happened because we continue to expand and deepen our activities and the achievements we've reached in the days before that, and especially in the week leading up to this day. And hopefully the results will be quite manifest over the next few days. I am hearing the fears and apprehensions that many Israelis feel uh, regarding the fact that we're going to stop or pause the war. And I can tell you that I, the IDF, the ISA, and the entire security as establishment are very much determined to follow through with this war until we achieve all the goals to obliterate Hamas as a government and as a military organization and to free all the hostages. This is what I considered most important yesterday in the government meeting and alongside the resolution, which is a very correct resolution. And I congratulate the government for deciding that to bring to this deal that will see to the release of the hostages over the next few days. I also insisted regarding the inclusion of a special element, a special item, what will happen after the days in which the hostages are released. And the resolution that was a adopted by the Israeli government unanimously was very clear cut. We're going to continue with the war in order to realize all of its goals, uh, to bring back the hostages to their homes and to obliterate Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The State of Israel is committed to this, the IDF is committed to this, the security establishment is committed, and I am personally committed to both of these goals. Tonight, I also have some thoughts. I have feelings of both difficulty and joy, sadness and pain on the one hand, but also a sense of relief on the other hand. I'm truly happy that God willing, we are going to release hostages and bring them back to their homes over the next few days. But I'm also thinking about those who will not be released in this imminent deal. And I'd like to say that, first of all, we uh, promise to bring them home. We are committed to that. We are going to continue to deepen our activities as much as required in order to increase pressure on Hamas and also in order to achieve through that measure the release of more hostages until we bring all the people who were abducted back to their homes, the women, the children, the soldiers, the teenagers, the young men and women, the elderly, the Holocaust survivors, all of them. This is my own personal commitment, and I intend to continue with this until we reach our goal. Hello, everyone. Yesterday, we reached a difficult decision, but it was the right decision, a decision that perhaps will determine the fates. It has the responsibility of determining fates, but it also has the certainty of saving human lives. 
honestly, this was, was one of the most difficult decisions I've had to make in over 40 years in which I've been serving this country. And in this war, there will be more such decisions. And I am wholeheartedly convinced that this is the right decision. Our commitment to bring back the, our sons and daughters back home and as we say, anybody who saves a soul of one Jewish life, it's as if you've saved an entire world. I believe that this decision, as well as the concern for the hostages, is a show of display, is a display of strength of the Israeli society. I wish to support the families of all the hostages, those who will get to see their loved ones, especially those that the threshold of their pain and their apprehension and anxiety will increase. Those families that their loved ones are not coming back yet. But our commitment is still valid. We will do everything in our power to bring them back as well. I promise to all the family members of the hostages, we are with you and we are here for you. As of tomorrow, we are going to continue and meet and support and do everything we can and everything possible to make sure that your loved ones will return. Let me emphasize, we are not going to go back until we execute. So we will go back and we will execute our plan. We all want the return of our hostages and we are all determined to complete the mission of lifting the threat of Hamas and changing reality. We know that the other side is looking, they're testing us, they're gonna try and buy time. And I'd like to say to Sinwar and the leadership of Hamas a sentence that I was topped by Major General in Reserves, my dear friend Polly Mordechai, in Arabic, we are a nation that has patience, a nation that survived the Holocaust and rose from the ashes, a nation that built a strong army and a successful and thriving society. We do not look at reality from the perspective of days. We are looking at the eternity of the Jewish people. And I am determined to continue the war. We are all determined to to win. The outline of the deal approved yesterday in which we are going to enter into tomorrow, God willing, does not divide us into right and left, secular Jews and religious Jews, Jews, Arabs, Druze. This outline is the necessity of the reality that was forced upon all of us. Some people think that the uh, pause, the truce, and the outline are not the right thing to do, and I respect their opinion. It's not a simple or easy choice between good and bad. There aren't good, good guys who want everybody to come back or the bad guys who want them to remain in the hands of Hamas. This is a very complex, complicated decision and we have a leadership that reached the best possible decision under the circumstances in their opinion. And those who think that we've made a mistake are also a part of this nation and we will all make sure that we all remain united and win. And before I finish, we are facing a few days of a truce and a pause in the south, and we look at the other borders as well. The IDF troops are fighting with courage as we're speaking in the Gaza Strip, and tens of thousands of troops are deployed throughout this country and near the borders. We are all strengthening them. We are preparing to continue with uh, the combat. And in this context, Hezbollah, who has lost many of its people and uh, led to the fact that tens of thousands of uh, Lebanese citizens had to flee their homes. It's important that they know that what's happening right now in Gaza, what's happening right now in the north of Gaza, could also happen in southern Lebanon. What has happened to Gaza can also happen to Beirut. We are well aware of the attempts of Iran to challenge us. And we will know how to act with those who send their proxies and the proxies themselves. 
any threat and every threat on Israel will not remain without a response. My dear brothers and sisters, citizens of Israel, we are facing some very complicated days as we face a very ruthless, ruthless enemy. And we are going to pass these days together with mutual support and responsibility. We will survive these days and we will win together. We will continue to build and develop our country. It is our only country, our beloved country. Thank you.